Welcome back to more Resident Evil 2. Reimagining. I almost called it Revelations. That's not right. Although this does have kind of a look and feel of a Revelations game without the stupid bloody screen. That's something that was approved on with this game. Don't know why I picked up that board. I'm not going to need any more of them. The bloody screen was something you got in the Revelations games if you took too much damage. I'm going through this area pretty quickly. There are quite a few items you can pick up. This first little segment, I played through this a few times. The last time that I recorded this, before what you're seeing, I got a stupid trophy notification. I'm not even sure why the hell it came up. All I did was pick up an item. I didn't really want any more trophy notifications on my videos. Fortunately, I figured out how to turn that off finally. Been saying since Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I recorded at the end of 2017 into the beginning of 2018, that I was going to take the time to figure out how to do that. And I only just did that last weekend. So I pretty much played everything y'all saw in video three, this video, and then the next one, and video edited it all last weekend. That's not a knife! This is a knife! Ah, oh, crap. Hey, buddy. You That's right. Okay, I know he's going to get back up, but as long as he stays down long enough for me to leave, that's cool. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I don't know why, every time we walk out here, she makes that weird noise. And flinches. It's kind of weird. But would not be the worst thing in the world. I'm realizing my inventory situation. I end up going back to the item box at some point to drop off stuff because there's a lot of stuff I'm picking up. I also missed a blue herb in that other area. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to kill those zombies in that room we were in? I do figure out a strategy that works for me getting through there even though they're still there because we're going to come back through that room in this video. Come in here. There's a red herb in here. As you can see, the helicopter crash has done some damage to this area of the police station. But that's not what I want to deal with right now. I want that red herb. Which I believe looks pink. Which is strange. Oh yeah, being full on stuff. Yeah, luckily you can mix herbs in this game unlike the original without having to have them already in your inventory. That saves me some backtracking. See what I mean? Every time you walk through here, she does that. She just likes to complain. And that's the inventory I'm going with now. I went and backtracked. Like I said I was going to. This area here is kind of a variation on an area from the original. Looks like they reversed everything, but still kind of there. Now we finally get some more classic Resident Evil 2 music. You know, for this being a paid DLC, you really would have thought you would have had more of this classic music. Green herb. I just decided to go ahead and make a super herb here. Figured why not. I really don't want to fight these zombies. If you can dodge them, then do so. The only time they can get annoying is they can go up those stairs and come after you and you definitely want that area clear, but if you can get up the stairs without them knowing that you're there, that one's down, then you're better off doing that. And I'm going to go drop off stuff again before we do the next thing we're going to do after we use this. Not much of a puzzle, but it's better than having to bring the valve handle. 
which we can't pick up anymore since we used it. And I like that, because that means when we get to the sewers, no carrying a stupid valve handle everywhere. So that is a win on the designers of this game's choices. Alright, well now we can progress back to the other part of the police station. Unimpeded? Fuck, maybe not! Run, Claire, run! Stay back. I want to say right now, I mentioned part of the original, or the soundtrack to this game being pretty bad. That's actually, well, this is one, this is Mr. X. Watch out for him. His theme for the original soundtrack of this game is pretty terrible. But as you can hear, I've got the Resident Evil 2 classic soundtrack, which is awesome and perfect for this situation. It's just like some weird techno thing and doesn't work it's very generic and uninteresting but this music fits this situation perfectly and I like the audio cue like it just plays as soon as he sees you and he's also going to be hunting you down and you want to try not to run too much because he'll hear that and he can follow you in here and he's a bit of a jerk You might be able to hear them there. You'll definitely hear a lot of footsteps throughout this area. Now that he's chasing us around. I've mentioned a couple videos back. Yeah, he's coming through there now, so we gotta hurry. He's gonna follow us in here. Now, I mentioned before this area we're going to now. Yeah, there's a liquor there now. That's why I was telling you before that you want this area cleared out. There are two zombies and a liquor in here now. And I've made myself quite a few acid rounds at this point. Gonna make sure he's dead. I don't want to waste ammo if I don't have to. That is interesting that they keep twitching and making noise for a little bit before dying. Baiting you into wasting ammo. Okay, I need you out of... You get out of my way, I'll sacrifice the knife, I guess. Piss off. Piss off. Run, Claire, run! Run! <laughs> oh, right, we're safe. That definitely adds to the tension, having him walking around looking for you. In some ways, it's kind of more annoying than anything else, because you just want to go somewhere and he's just right there, but it's a really interesting idea. And if they can expand on it a little bit and perfect it. And you guys are seeing everything that I'm doing right now, except me having to walk all the way around a bunch of the areas just to get them to go away so I can do what I want to do. You didn't have to deal with that. But other than that, yeah, I have to poke my head out here, see if he's there. Of course he's there, so now i got to wait. So in some ways it's kind of annoying, other ways it's really cool. Not sure what he's squishing on there. And those footsteps are pretty dang intense. When they make Remake 3, I'll be really curious to see how they do Nemesis based on this. Revenge! Alright, we need to get back into that save room. This is one of the few rooms in the game he will not fall you into. I guess the designers knew that they needed to give you a couple of save spots. That save room we started this video at, he won't fall you into there. I didn't know that while playing, though. I only found that out recently, which is why I'm going to be panicking a little bit at the end of this video unnecessarily. But that's all right. There's a knife. Since he's behind us now, I can come in here. This room, he's going to spawn in here no matter what. So it doesn't really bother me that he's following me right now. As long as he doesn't catch up to me, we're good. Because he's going to teleport in here anyways. This is a room I'll have to come back to. There's a grenade and some gunpowder in here. Stay over there. I'm going this way. 
Fortunately, he's not as fast as Nemesis. I can only imagine. If they ramp up that tension factor for the Resident Evil 3 remake, Nemesis is going to be a bitch. That is not going to be fun, because this guy, I almost can never lose him without significant effort and luck. And Nemesis is actually fast and has a machine gun and a rocket launcher. This is why I was saying a few videos back, you want those zombies dead in this area. Because now you got Mr. X and that liquor. And if you add the two zombies onto that, it gets problematic. And I found that out firsthand, so don't be like me in that situation. It's not good. I mean, normally you should strive for the perfection that is me, but in that situation, it happened. So, do as I say, not as I do. At some point, I just decide to take the chance and hope he's walking the other way. I can't really tell where he's going. It's not like he's walking away now. As long as he's not hanging about up here. Hey, you be quiet. Nobody asked you. Don't be giving away my position. Stupid zombie. I'm surprised he doesn't attack the zombies, though. You'd think he wouldn't really be able to identify the difference between a person and a zombie. So he's on the first floor, and we can still hear him stomping around. And you can't kill him either. Technically, in Leon's campaign, he's your final boss, so you do end up killing him in that. But there's no continuity between the stories, Leon and Claire's. Unfortunately. So we picked up that USB thing. That's another lack of attention to detail. I'm pretty sure they didn't have USB in 1998. Whatever, we'll pretend it's a floppy disk. How about that? This is the optional thing I mentioned. Last video, I believe it was. Yep, pick up a machine gun. The star's office is another place that he will not show up in. This is a weird letter from Chris where he's writing to his star's members. This does not sound like Chris. Talking about a vacation. I choose to believe that rather than give us the good backstory that we got in the second game, we do want to take that back with us. It'll have another use later. I'm not I think I know where we need to use it. I just don't know how to get back there yet. Leave. I choose to believe that they decided to investigate Umbrella in secret in this version. Oh, there's a liquor over here. And I want to kill this liquor simply because if I need to wander through here and Mr. X is chasing me, I don't want to have to deal with him and the liquor. That's just going to cause a lot more problems that I don't want to deal with. And I am going to have to come back through here because there's an item I'm not able to pick up. Not one I desperately need. Probably not worth the acid shell I used to get it, but you never know. It could be. Here's another new room. I choose to believe that they decided to investigate Umbrella in secret this time. And he's off in Europe, just like originally, to investigate Umbrella... But he decided, in this case, to pretend like he's on vacation, so they wouldn't know that's what he's doing. Which, to be fair, would be kind of smart. They're a big global organization in this universe, so you would kind of think that if they knew you were investigating them, they would just have you dead. If that was the developer's intention behind that, then that's pretty cool. I don't know if it is or not, though. I don't want to give them too much credit, but if that's what they were going for, then that was well done. Hopefully they go more into detail about that whenever they do the Resident Evil 3 remake. In the original of 3, they never actually mentioned any of the investigating Umbrella, so it would be nice to get more information on that in the remake whenever that happens. 
So fortunately, all the zombies we need to worry about are dead. Fortunately, Mr. X is buggered off. And we can come right over here and use this item that we picked up. I mentioned before, the zombie that's behind us right now, as long as we don't go over there, he's not going to get up. He's going to keep munching on the body he's already eating. So another YouTuber I refer to as SC, who watched my original Resident Evil 2, I played through the original Resident Evil 2, I should say, had asked the question, why would a zombie come after you if they've already got a fresh meal right there? Well, that zombie right over there that we're not even taking a look at, that is a smart zombie. He's focusing on his meal. He's not worried about what's going on around him. Unless you actually disturb him. You got to see him briefly there. Yeah, he's just having lunch. I'm just trying to make sure that I did this bridge building properly. Also, if you climb on that ladder, that'll trigger him as well. Oh, and I hear him. I guess you guys are going to see me do some walking around unnecessarily just to get rid of him. Run, Claire, run! I didn't think this actually made it into the video. I don't want to edit any of this out because I want people watching this to see just what you have to deal with. Oh, bollocks, that zombie is not dead. I think I decided to go save my game so I don't have to do that stuff again. Not sure. Doesn't really matter for y'all. Oh, right, we needed back this way anyways. Yeah, because we got another one of these things to deal with. It really works better when I do gameplay than do a video and then gameplay in a video, but that leads to me not getting to play the game as much as I want. But then it does cause some problems when I try to remember what the heck we were actually doing in each of these particular segments. I'm pretty sure every one of these videos I've forgotten something about what I was doing at the time. I did save my game there because I don't want to do that stupid puzzle again. I'm not going for rank. I'm just trying to get through the LP. In order to do what I want for this LP, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to play Leon A and Claire B as well. We're playing Claire A right now. There's no real point to the scenarios. I don't know why they even bothered. It's not like in the original game where the story had its own continuity depending on which scenario pair you went with. It's basically the same game either way, it's just the B scenario gets the boss fight and starts off the game a little differently. As far as I know, everything else is exactly the same. Which is really a shame because they really had a chance to expand. Even if they just wanted to do one story for Leah and one for Claire and have them line up. Oh god. Run! You people are right where I want to be! That's right, like I said before, not editing this out. I want you to see exactly what I had to deal with. Just trying to get to the locker room. I'm calling it a real locker room, not like a locker room like at a gym or anything, but the weapons locker room. I mean, they even did that in Resident Evil 6 where each character had their own side to the story and you play their campaign to see what they were up to during those events. When I heard they weren't doing the A and B scenarios, that's what I thought they were doing in this game. Unfortunately, they chose to go in the direction of Resident Evil 1. Which is something I was hoping they would fix in that remake as well, and they did. That zombie's still around here somewhere. Look, buddy. I don't want to have to kill you. I don't want to waste the bullets. I don't want to waste the time. You left me no choice. It's Mr. Trenchcoat Pants is over there. And I can't actually kill him. Had to be done. 
Now that we've completed this keypad, we can actually get the last remaining items in here. It's just a knife, which isn't all that useful, and then we get another hip pouch, which is very useful. He's lurking. There we go. Good times. Basically, this is a solid game that could have been great with a few changes, especially with the story and the scenarios. I hear him walking. I actually wanted out the door, but whatever. And that zombie's back up. Dude, how many rounds do we want me to shoot into you? He's coming. He sees me. I don't have time to wait for you. You get. Get in the dark room. I don't know about you guys, but Mr. X, I don't think he's a nice person. I find it highly unlikely that he just wants hugs. I could be wrong. I thought everybody wanted hugs, but I don't think that's what he's after. I mean, if he was, I wouldn't be able to blame him. But I think his hugs would be deadly. All this talk of hugs. No, I want a hug. So now I'm going to be walking everywhere to try to not attract him. She's going to make this take longer than it should, especially considering you've already seen me go through this path once this video. On a positive note, my videos for this series have been a lot shorter than a lot of my videos. Not so much the first video, but the rest of these have been. So that's kind of good. This is why I wanted that liquor dead. I didn't want to try to dodge him and then have Mr. X showing up. I should suppose I could call him Mr. Angry Pants as well, but I already dubbed that Kratos' nickname. Also Mr. Smiley, which I think is perfect for Kratos. For me now, this was moment of truth time, making sure I did that bridge building well enough to get where we need to go. Still being quiet. Fortunately, he's far away right now. Can't even hear him. And fortunately, success. He can go up in here and will, so... Be mindful of that. It would be interesting if you could block off certain avenue of pursuit for him. Which would, of course, block off path that you would have to travel to, though. That zombie's going to be a bitch. I don't necessarily want to kill you guys, but you're just perfectly placed to annoy me. And you're dead now anyway, so I'll go with that. I hear footsteps. I hear he can't walk into this room. I don't know that for sure. The first time I walked through this room, I remember just hiding in a corner for a minute or two just to see if he was going to come in here. Because I was actually hearing the footsteps of him at that point. He was actually out on that catwalk. On the catwalk. Although, I don't think he's too sexy for anything. But that's just my opinion. If you're a Mr. X fanboy or fangirl, if you want to jump on that shit, that's your business. I don't judge. And I learned from trying this the first time. I yeah, see, that's pretty intense. You hear him opening doors and everything. Walking around, looking for you. 
I'm guessing what I heard is true, and he can't actually get in here. But of course, playing this, if you don't know that, you're kind of worried and being careful, and that's what I was doing here, because I did not know that at the time. But it makes sense, because I never saw him come in here. That gunpowder, when you mix it with more gunpowder, will give you more ammo. It's still the equivalent of the first gunpowder that we got. But it'll give you more, so I'll be using that to make more acid shells. I think mixed with the other gunpowder, it makes like eight, whereas normally you get like three or four. That's very nice. I hope I didn't waste it making acid shells, but I found acid shells pretty useful right now. That could be changing coming up. I'm not sure. I have not made it past the sewers yet. I would say do this puzzle the way I'm doing it now. It'll save you some backtracking. And at the time, like I've said before, I was concerned that Mr. X was going to be running around in here. And I was trying to minimize everything I needed to do. Yeah, big gear goes there, little gear goes downstairs. It's not a badly designed clock tower. I thought for sure he was coming in here at that point. I don't know what doors he's opening up, but I thought for sure he was coming in here there. That would have made sense, too, considering we're doing something to progress in the game, and usually that's when he'll be triggered by a scripted event. You broke it, you bought it. I'm pretty sure I didn't actually show this. So the items we're picking up, we picked up one of these at the start of this video. These electronic parts, we're going to see what they're used for. I didn't click on what we're going to use them for to show the hint. So if you're watching this for a walkthrough, you may be wondering why the hell we're going and getting them. But you'll see this video, why we need these. Yeah, hey, looks like we got a checkpoint. Sweet. So what I wanted to make sure I had is a flash grenade equipped right now. I mentioned those zombies that are left in that room. Actually, we'll be finding out the purpose of these devices here really soon. These zombies, I thought to myself, if they're going to be in there just in case they try to jump me, because sometimes they'll do that when you try to open up a door, a zombie will be standing right there and grab you. I figured if I just open the door, toss in a flash grenade, that should distract them long enough for me to get through without having to waste ammo. I do want to save as many of these secondary items as I can, though. They're going to be really useful in the lab. I'm sure Mr. X is coming, so we need to book it. And at some point, he's going to teleport here. There are certain points that he will teleport. They're scripted events, and we're about to get one of them. The other one was in that area where we picked up that thing that we used on the bookcase in the library. As soon as we get downstairs, he's going to be somewhere around here. I don't know where the hell he is, but I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to go through the store. And at this point, I'm kind of freaking out because I didn't know that he can't actually come in here. That's something I found out later. Freaking out might be too strong of a term, but I was still concerned and didn't know till at some point next video that he can't actually get in here. Yeah, these electronic parts, we're going to use them on this gate right here. Must have forgot the other electronic part. Maybe put them all in and you make this weird little puzzle. 
It does take me a little bit to get, but it's not too bad. It reminds me a lot of the puzzles you get in Onimusha. All four of those games had these different kinds of puzzles that you could do to open chests and get different kinds of health and magic upgrades. Sometimes you got items. Those are some of my favorite parts of those games. And they were fun on their own as hack and slash games, but I liked, I really enjoyed the puzzle boxes. Especially the ones in the fourth game. I know I've said that on plenty of LPs. But it's true, they're good. And I've heard that they remastered Onimusha 1. I don't know why they didn't just remaster the whole series and release it as a one disc thing. Kind of odd. I don't want to do too much in here yet because that'll trigger a cutscene and then we'll be put in another scenario that I don't want to deal with right now. I want to save my game before we do that. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Mind you, at this point, I'm still thinking he can bust in here. Once he violated the sanctity of the main hall of the police station, I figured nothing was sacred. That's all I'm going to do for this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time with more of this lovely game.